Hey you, welcome back. The next pair of books I read in the summer of 2024 were Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents by Octavia E. Butler. Collectively, this is a brilliant and prophetic work of dystopian fiction that feels frighteningly close to home here in 2024. Parable of the Sower was originally published in 1993, and it paints a picture of a near-future America ravaged by environmental collapse, economic inequality, and societal breakdown. Butler's prose is rich and literary and haunting, and she does a phenomenal job of capturing both the beauty and the brutality of this terrifying new world. The story is set in the 2020s in a time when climate disasters and economic collapse have left the U.S. fractured and essentially lawless. Lauren Olamina is the book's young black protagonist, and she lives in a walled-off community outside of L.A., where her Baptist minister father and their neighbors all band together to defend themselves against the encroaching chaos of the outside world. Lauren was born with a condition called hyperempathy that causes her to feel the pain and the pleasure of others as if it were her own. The inciting incident of the novel occurs when her community is destroyed by fire and violence, and Lauren is forced to flee into the lawless world beyond her now ruined community. Along the way, she gathers a small group of survivors as they venture northward in search of safety. Lauren's journey isn't just about survival because she's also a visionary who is in the process of forming the foundation of a new belief system she calls Earthseed, which is centered around the notion that God is change. Earthseed offers a glimmer of humanistic hope in a hopeless world, but it's not without its detractors. The novel is structured as Lauren's journal entries, which tell of both her internal struggles and the harrowing external world. As she faces starvation, the loss of friends, the loss of family members, unimaginable violence, and slavery in the form of indentured servitude, Lauren remains convinced that humanity can rebuild and thrive, but only if they are willing to embrace change. At its core, Parable of the Sower explores survival in a world where humanity has lost its way. Octavia Butler provides a searing critique of society's trajectory in the 90s, touching on issues like climate change, unchecked capitalism, systemic inequality, issues that have certainly come home to roost here in 2024. But one of the novel's most powerful themes is adaptability. Lauren's belief that God is change resonates deeply and constantly throughout the novel. She teaches her followers that survival depends not on clinging to old systems and traditions, but on the willingness to adapt to the harsh and uncertain realities around them. This philosophy is a stark contrast to the rigid religious beliefs of her father, offering a more fluid and forward-thinking path. Another prominent theme is just how fragile civilization truly is. Octavia Butler's America in these novels is one in which the rule of law has crumbled, where gated communities offer very little, if any, protection from the chaos beyond, and where society has broken down into violent, self-serving factions. It's a grim depiction of what could happen if climate change and poverty and greed continue to go unchecked. This is a painful and powerful book. Octavia Butler's vision of the future feels as if it could be only a few bad years away from becoming our unpleasant reality. 
the collapse of society in Parable of the Sower doesn't come from alien invasions or unprecedented catastrophes. It's the result of the all too human forces of greed and apathy and anthropogenic environmental degradation. Butler's prose is stunning. Her writing is gorgeous and literary and vivid. She never shies away from the brutal realities of her world, but she does mercifully spare us the most unsavory details, allowing the bleakness to linger without overwhelming. The violence and the suffering are definitely unrelenting, but they are not gratuitous. What really sets this novel apart, though, is its ability to feel both intensely personal and universally resonant. At its core, Lauren's story of survival is deeply intimate, and it offers a raw and emotional look into the psyche of a young woman forced to navigate a collapsing world. Octavia Butler explores Lauren's inner life, her fears, her doubts, her unshakable belief in Earthseed, and she wrestles with loss and isolation and the burden of leadership. Her story is not only about physical survival, but also about the survival of her ideals and her hope for a better future. But while Lauren's experience is uniquely her own, it also serves as a broader metaphor for humanity's collective fight for survival in the face of existential threats. Her path through the chaos and destruction mirrors the adaptability that we all need to summon when confronted with overwhelming crises like environmental devastation or societal collapse or the erosion of human rights. This novel reflects the human experience of enduring and overcoming, even when the odds seem totally insurmountable. Parable of the Sower is a book that stays with you. It's a warning about the future, and it's just as relevant today as it was when Butler wrote it, maybe even more so. It's a bleak and unflinching look at what happens when society collapses under the weight of its own failures. But it's also a tribute to the power of hope and the human spirit. It's not an easy read by any means, but it is an essential one because Butler is bold enough to confront us with our darkest possibilities while still pointing to a way forward, which is something we need more than ever in this day and age. And then Parable of the Talents, published in 1998, is the brilliant follow-up to Parable of the Sower, diving even deeper into this dystopian world. Parable of the Talents expands the narrative with multiple perspectives and looks at the consequences of hope and belief in a remarkably prescient exploration of political power, authoritarianism, and the fragility of social progress. A discussion of this book will inevitably contain spoilers from the first book, so if you've not yet read Parable of the Sower and you'd like to, I would turn back now if I were you. We good? Okay. Parable of the Talents essentially picks up where Parable of the Sower left off, with Lauren Olamina having founded Earthseed, her fledgling community built around that belief that God is change, and with the goal of taking humanity to the stars. Lauren is now married to Ben Cole, that gentle-hearted doctor and former professor that we met in the first book, and together they continue to nurture Lauren's utopian vision, even as the world outside their community, which they call Acorn, grows more and more dangerous. But the rise of Andrew Jarrett, a populist demagogue running for president on the recognizable slogan, Make America Great Again, threatens everything Lauren has worked for. Jarrett's Christian America movement is both religiously zealous and violently nationalistic, and 
It's trying to restore order to the lawlessness through the brutal suppression of dissenters, which includes non-Christians and anyone they deem to be impure. Jarrett and his followers view Earthseed as a dangerous cult, and the book's depiction of his rise to power feels eerily prophetic as it echoes real-world political rhetoric. The story is told through multiple perspectives this time, including, once again, journal entries from Lauren herself, but we also get narratives from her daughter, Larkin, who is later renamed Asha, and Lauren's husband, Ben Cole. Asha's voice is particularly important as she provides a retrospective look at her mother's legacy, one that's marked by both admiration and bitterness. As a child, Asha was taken from Lauren during a raid on the Earthseed community by Jarrett's fanatical followers. She grows up estranged from her mother and her teachings, and she harbors resentment toward her mother for prioritizing her vision of Earthseed over her maternal duties. As the story unfolds, Earthseed faces harsh persecution as Lauren and her followers are imprisoned and tortured and subjected to forced conversion. Despite the horrors they endure, Lauren remains determined to spread her message of adaptability and forward thinking, even as the cost grows higher and higher. The novel ultimately ends on a bittersweet note with Earthseed enduring and Lauren achieving some measure of success in spreading her philosophy beyond the confines of our home planet, though her personal sacrifices, particularly her estrangement from her daughter, really serve to emphasize the emotional toll of her unrelenting commitment to her own vision. Parable of the Talents is an exploration of the intersection between hope and authoritarianism, showing how belief systems, whether religious or ideological, can inspire both creation and destruction. One of the most prominent themes I found in this book is the tension between personal ambition and communal responsibility. Lauren's drive to build Earthseed is powerful and admirable, but it comes at a significant personal cost, especially in her relationships with both her husband and her daughter. Octavia Butler asks us to consider whether the pursuit of a greater good can ever truly justify sacrificing the people we love. Another major theme is the manipulation of fear and religion as tools of power. Jarrett's rise through the Christian America movement with its slogan, Make America Great Again, feels chillingly prescient. Butler examines how authoritarian leaders exploit societal instability by appealing to nationalism and religious fundamentalism, promising safety and order while fueling division and violence. The book's depiction of Jarrett's regime, which uses religion as both a weapon and a justification for its brutality, feels all too familiar in today's political climate, and as a Christian myself, it felt disgustingly offensive. Parable of the Talents also dives pretty deeply into the theme of legacy, both personal and ideological. Asha's story in particular grapples with the tension between Lauren's dream for Earthseed and the real-world consequences of that dream on her family. Asha's bitterness toward her mother is perhaps a reflection of the human cost of idealism, and Butler does not shy away from showing how visionary leaders can often fail their loved ones in the pursuit of their larger goals. I personally found Parable of the Talents to be even more engaging and layered than Parable of the Sower. 
while the first book paints a grim picture of societal collapse, the sequel offers a more complex exploration of the aftermath of survival. What happens after you've found a way to endure and now face the challenges of building something new in the ruins of the old world? The introduction of multiple points of view, particularly Asha's, adds further depth and nuance to the story and serves to explore the lasting effects of Lauren's choices on those around her. Asha's conflicted feelings toward her mother are heartbreaking and add an emotional complexity that wasn't as present in the first book. The political commentary in Parable of the Talents is perhaps the most striking aspect of the book, particularly with the use of that slogan. While it's true that this phrase, make America great again, was used by political figures like Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton, its resurgence in the political landscape of the 2010s makes Butler's use of it seem chillingly prophetic. The book's depiction of religious fanaticism and the erosion of civil liberties and the scapegoating of marginalized groups feels disturbingly familiar. It's all a brilliant example of Octavia Butler's incredible foresight. Parable of the Talents is a remarkable continuation of the Earthseed saga and a powerful reflection on the human capacity for both destruction and hope. It feels even more prophetic than its predecessor, particularly in its depiction of the rise of authoritarianism and religious extremism. Octavia Butler's writing is as sharp and insightful as ever, and the inclusion of multiple perspectives adds layers of complexity to the story. It's a tragedy that Butler didn't live to complete the full series she'd envisioned, but with Parable of the Talents, she left us with a thought-provoking and hauntingly relevant novel that feels like it could have been written yesterday. In my tier ranking of the books I've read in 2024, I place Parable of the Sower right here between Chasm City and This Is How You Lose the Time War. And then I place Parable of the Talents right ahead of it. The Earthseed Saga is an important pair of books without a doubt, but Chasm City was definitely more fun in terms of my personal enjoyment. Regardless, I did love these books, and I am very grateful to have read them. There is a reason Sower was nominated for a Nebula Award, and there's a reason Talents won a Nebula Award. They are incredible, emotionally challenging books that you should absolutely read. If you have read the Earthseed Saga, I would love to discuss it with you down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.